In this video, we will examine the post estimation commands after OLS regressions. After we regress a model, we can use a lot of post estimate commands, including marginal effects of a covariate, linear tests of parameter estimates, tests for heteroscedasticity, diagnostic plots, and many others. Let me show you some of the commonly used post estimation commands. I will start with the predict command. After we regress wage on a list of expenditure variables, we can use the predict command with the residuals option to obtain the OLS residuals and use the XB option to obtain the fitted values. We type predict red one comma residuals and we generate a new variable called red one containing the OLS residuals of the model. If we type predict XB1 comma and option XB, we will generate a new variable containing the fitted values for the linear predictions of the model. We can now summarize these new variables. We see that the mean of the fitted values matches the real mean of the observations. However, the standard deviation and the minimum and maximum predictions differ from the real values. Let's take a close look at it using graphs. The graph two-way command shows the kernel density plots. We can type graph two-way and put the graph commands inside the parentheses. We see that the fit values of wage do not seem to fit the data very well. The distribution does not seem right. The real wage data has a long tail. It suggests that the model does not fit the underlying data very well. We also have the residual predictions. We can check the residuals distribution by typing k density red one and the normal option. The residuals do not look normal. Recall that one of the OLS assumptions is that the error term has the same variance. We can check it using scatter plots. We scatter the residuals against the fitted values. We type graph two-way and scatter red one xb1 inside the parentheses. I add the y line option to show the horizontal line at zero. We see that the plots are not randomly distributed along the zero line, and the variance of the residuals becomes larger as the wages increase. It implies heteroscedasticity of the data. Stata provides a command called RVF plot to draw exactly the same graph without first generating the residuals and fitted values. The LVR2 plots command is short for leverage versus squared residual plot. This is a useful tool for figuring out how a given point influences the data. The most problematic points have a high leverage and a high residual in the upper right of the plot. There's no such point in our example. We may also be concerned about multicollinearity. A high correlation between two or more expenditure variables is called multicollinearity. It leads to a large coefficient variance or an imprecise estimate of the coefficient. To check whether there is a multicollinearity problem, we use the matrix graph. We see no evidence of multicollinearity in the model.